2022 was such a fun reading year for me. I read some great books, some mediocre books, and then some not so great books. So the not so great I'll mention at the end of the video, but for now, let's jump into my favorites. This stack of my top 10 favorite books for the year is a little bit of everything. I tend to be all over the shop reader. I gravitate towards romance, fantasy, and a little bit in between, which I labeled as miscellaneous in this video. So let's jump in and start with the romance category. The first romance book to make my favorites list this year is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book was so compelling from the very first page to the very last. If it wasn't for my kid, my husband, my job, I would have read this book in one sitting. It was that good. This book follows our main character, Emma, who falls in love with Jesse and they move to California after graduation and start living this super adventurous life. One day, unfortunately, Jesse gets on a helicopter and it crashes and he's gone. Emma's obviously devastated and she moves back to the East Coast to be with her family to pick up the pieces and learn to move on. She reconnects with someone from her past and is finally finding the ability to move forward and look ahead in life. But one day she's at dinner with her family and her fiance and Jesse calls. So as you can imagine, what a shock that was to her. The book from there is really her grappling with the decision of picking Jesse or staying with her current fiance. And I don't typically like love triangles. They never end well. I always feel so sad for the person that doesn't get picked. It's also sometimes super obvious who they're gonna pick and they just don't do it well. But in this case, it was done so, so well. It was treated with so much care. It was really delicate. Such a good book, I highly recommend. The next romance book to make my favorites of the year is All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. Now listen, I know our girl Colleen Hoover doesn't need any more free PR. She has everyone and their pets reading her books, but I had to include it. It was absolutely one of my favorites. This book broke me and put me back together in 300 pages. It had me in fetal position. It had me ugly crying. It had me doing all the things, but it was so worth it. It is such a great story of a marriage in peril and a marriage trying to work through their difficulties. It's told in past present perspective, the past is them falling in love. The present is them kind of falling out of love and working to fight for their marriage. It is such a good story. I highly recommend it. I will probably be reading it once a year for the rest of my life. It has imprinted on my soul um, and I highly recommend that you read it as well. The only thing I will say it is a very heavy read. So go into it knowing that there are also a lot of triggers in here. So read those online if you want to see the full list just in case before you walk into this book. But highly, highly highly recommend such a great read. The next romance book to make my favorites of the year is The Birthday List by Debney Perry. This book was so, so sweet. It's set in a small town in Montana and it's the story of Poppy and Cole told in dual POV. The story starts out with Poppy being married to a guy named Jamie and he has an untimely death, unfortunately. But before he dies, Jamie made a birthday list of one thing he wanted to do every year on his birthday that was new and that was adventurous. And so after he dies, Poppy sets out to accomplish everything on his birthday list in his honor and in his memory. Along the way, she meets Cole and Cole helps her accomplish this birthday list. He is so sweet, he is so patient, and it's just the sweetest journey of them getting to know each other, honoring Jamie's memory, and then also falling in love with so much patience and so much care and tenderness. It's such a sweet story. Like I said, it's set in a small town. The supporting characters are so sweet. It has such great small town vibes, kind of like Stars Hollow. It almost had me wanting to pack up my life and move there myself, and I just wanted to be a part of this whole little community and this world. It's a very sweet story. I highly recommend. The last romance book to make my favorites list this year is When in Rome by Sarah Adams. This book was so cute, very lighthearted, very quick and easy read. It's very peaches and rainbows rom-com kind of vibes and sometimes you need that. There's a time and place for peaches and rainbows, especially after reading so many heavy books like the three I mentioned before. This story is about Amelia. She's a famous singer in this world and she feels like she needs a break from her life because she's not really connected to it anymore. And so she goes on a little adventure and goes off to this small town called Rome, Kentucky, where she runs into a local bakery shop owner named Noah. And the book is about them kind of being stuck together while she's on this adventure to take a break from her life. He's very grumpy. She's very sunshine. It's dual POV. It's very sweet, very cute and lighthearted. It won't change your life and it's not going to rock your world. But sometimes, like I said, you just need a little break from the heaviness and something very cute and just to give you that butterfly feeling. And this book does just that. The next three books on my favorites list are a little bit of miscellaneous. We have some fiction and then a mystery, so I just kind of lumped them in together into this miscellaneous category. The first one I'm gonna mention is Finlay Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. 
this book is so many levels of ridiculous that you can't help but love it. It's so bizarre, it's so entertaining and really, really funny. This follows our main character, Finlay, who is a single mom and she's going through a very messy divorce and her life is kind of down in the dumps right now. She's really struggling to pay her bills and just kind of get through one day at a time. She is a writer and one day she goes to a Panera Bread to meet with her editor to tell her about her next book. And the book happens to be talking about a hitman and a lady at the table next door misconstrues what she's saying and she thinks Finlay is a real life hitman. And so she slips her a note and says, hey, I'd like to hire you to kill my husband. And so as you can imagine, Finlay finds herself in quite the pickle. She doesn't know how to explain it. So she kind of goes along with it and she finds herself falling into the pitfalls of this story of this woman's history with her husband and what happened and why she wants to kill him and so she goes on this little adventure and trail to figure out what's going on and she finds herself in completely bizarre scenarios it's a really funny story like i said it's completely bizarre it wouldn't happen in real life but it is very entertaining it gets five stars for entertainment i highly recommend it if you want something funny with a little bit of mystery and just something you know a little light-hearted in the genre of mystery and the blurb on the front says most moms are ready to kill someone by 8 30 a.m on any given morning and I can 100% attest to this. It is absolutely true. Great book. Highly recommend. The next book to make my favorites list of the year is probably my most surprising book of the year and maybe even my single most favorite book of the year. And it really took me by storm. It came out of left field. I wasn't expecting much going into it. And then when I came out of it, I was like, whoa, what did I just read? It was so good. And that book is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. I've only read one other book by this author and even that book, you kind of go into it not knowing what's gonna happen or that even a lot is going to happen, but you come out of it and you're like, wow, that was such a fantastic book. And the same thing happened with this one. I loved it, it was a great story. The plot I can't even really explain because it's kind of about a bank robbery that didn't happen. It's about a hostage situation, but not really. It's just very interesting. Maybe I should just leave it at that and let you go into it without much knowledge because it's really fun that way. That's part of the appeal of Frederick Bachman books, I think, is that you go into it expecting one thing and then you really come out of it having gotten so much more. This book tells the story of anxiety and how we as humans in society behave and how we deal with those anxieties. And as a highly anxious individual myself, I really felt very seen in this book and understood. And it was really nice to know that all over the world people are experiencing the same things that we do the same anxieties and it was told in such a like sweet novel way and it has some super quotable quotes in here because as you can see I tabbed it a lot there was so many great quotes um, about the human condition like I said in just a really really great novel I it it just was everything and like my husband says sweets was it every single thing Yes, it was every single thing. It's everything. So go and read this book pronto. The last book to make it to my favorites list in the miscellaneous category is Everyone's an Alien When You're an Alien 2 by Jomni Sun. This book is actually a graphic novel, which is why I included it in this miscellaneous category. But this book is about a sweet little alien who comes to Earth to learn about Earthlings. And while he's here, he encounters a number of different creatures who are going through some various challenges. This book tells a lot about the human experience, about loneliness, about change, accepting who we are, trying to figure out who we are. At first glance, this seems like a really light, easy, funny read, but actually it's much deeper than that. And what I get from this book is that, you know, we all go through really challenging phases of our life. And what's important to remember is that everyone experiences loneliness, everyone experiences sadness and happiness and ups and downs, and that none of it is permanent. It's all fleeting. It can come and go in a moment. And the main focus is that we continue to push forward. So this story is such a compelling read about the human experience in all those different facets. I tabbed a number of the pages because sometimes I refer back to them when I'm feeling sad, when I'm feeling lonely. It's a great reminder that we all go through that at one point or another and we're all in this thing together. So really sweet graphic novel. The next three books on my favorites list are from the fantasy genre and I'm gonna start with my favorite which is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This is a YA fantasy and I devoured every page of this book. It is about our main character Brie who tragically loses her mother at the beginning of the story 
degree right before she's about to start an early college program at UNC, which is where her mother went as well. She does proceed to go even while dealing with her grief. And while she's there, she begins to see and experience a lot of magical elements, which has her asking questions. And she also encounters a secret society along the way. And she's starting to believe that her mother's passing was not an accident. And there might be some link between the secret society and her mother's death. So she gets herself into the secret society and she begins to uncover a lot of truths and tries to solve this mystery of her mother's passing while she's there. She meets a love interest along the way, which keeps things very cute and interesting. This book is so action packed and go, go, go from the very jump. You hardly have a second to breathe. Neither does our main character Brie. I love the character. She is so strong. She's so strong willed. She really knows what she wants and she goes after it. She writes as a really compelling character. I also love that in this fantasy book, it's not info dumpy right from the beginning. Sometimes with fantasies, you can get so overwhelmed with detail at the beginning before you've even gotten attached to the characters of the story. Whereas with Tracy Dion here, what she did was so beautiful in the way that she peppered it throughout the book and gave it to you little by little. And I really enjoyed experiencing the book in that way. I cannot wait to read the sequel. This is such a good book, highly recommend. The next fantasy book to make my favorites list of the year is Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Maas. This is actually the second book in the Throne of Glass series, but I put this one on my favorites list because I preferred it to the first one. This story is about our main character, Selena, who is an assassin. At the beginning of the series, she is a slave in a salt mine in this kingdom. She is summoned to the castle to participate in a contest to become the king's champion. If she becomes the king's champion, then she can eventually earn her freedom back and be a free civilian living in society. As the king's champion, she would have to kill enemies, fight battles, do anything that the king desires in order to keep his place at the top of the kingdom. So while she's at the castle participating in the contest, she also uncovers a lot of other mysteries. She meets a lot of great characters. She meets some love interests, and she also begins to unravel a lot of pieces of her past as well. So it's a really dynamic story that's multifaceted and multi-layered. And Selena is such a great character because oftentimes women can be portrayed as only having one single layer. And I hate that. I hate when you pigeonhole someone and you put a label on them and that's all they are. Either you're a damsel in distress or you're a really strong woman and you have no feelings or you're too aggressive or you're too emotional there's always one single label that people try to put whereas in this book with selena she is so multifaceted she is sensitive but she's also strong she's compassionate but she's also ruthless when she needs to be there's so many layers to her and it's been so much fun reading about it there's also a romance element to this which i love in my fantasy books i love fantasy romance it's not quite as heavy romance as the court of thorns and roses series is but it is in there and it is a big part of the plot I can't wait to read the rest of the books in the series, but certainly a must read and I highly recommend. The last fantasy book to make my favorites list of the year is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. This book is a YA retelling of Beauty and the Beast. After reading A Court of Thorns and Roses, I didn't think I would enjoy any other Beauty and the Beast retellings, and there's so many of them out there now, but this one was enjoyable. It's definitely a lighter take on it. It's about our main character, Harper, who is kidnapped into a world by a guardsman named Grey, and he serves the prince named Ren, who's trapped in this kingdom under a curse until he can find someone to fall in love with him and break that curse. It's the typical Beauty and the Beast kind of plot line, but the difference in this book is that it does take a different take on it. Harper also has cerebral palsy, which I love the representation. Ren and Grey have an interesting relationship, and at the end of the book, there is a big plot twist, and it kind of leaves you on a little bit of a cliffhanger, and so it has you wanting to read the next two books. I thought it was pretty good. I'm not going to give too much of a detailed summary because we all know the story of Beauty and the Beast, but just know that this doesn't follow that tale quite that close, and it does have its own take on it. It's an interesting world, still very entertaining and enjoyable to read. If you're looking for a Court of Thrones and Roses type vibes, but light, like Akatar adjacent, then this would be the book for you. And I still found it to be enjoyable. So still read it and give it a chance if that's the type of vibe that you're looking for. So there you have it. These are my top 10 favorite books of the year. I'm so happy with my picks. They made for such a fun reading year. I can't wait to dive into more books in 2023. Now, before you go, I also have my least favorite books of the year. So if you'd like to hear about those, keep watching because who doesn't love a bit of tea, even if it's about books. 
Now before I jump into these least favorite books of the year, I just want to say please take this with a pinch of salt and some humor. These are my opinions and my experiences of reading these books. If you love these books, I love it for you. Please enjoy. But for me, they were not great experiences. This also is not a commentary on the personal lives of these authors. I'm sure they're all wonderful people. They all deserve love and joy and all the puppy cuddles in the world. I just did not enjoy this particular piece of content that they created. So it's not personal, just my opinions. The first book to make it to my least favorite book of the year list is The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. This book, no, 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 just no. It was too long, too boring, and too much of nothing. It did not take me anywhere. It did not take me on the ride that it promised with this amazing fake dating story and an amazing wedding in Spain. It was too literal. There was no room for interpretation or magic or butterflies or nuance. It was a lot of telling, not a lot of showing, and not a lot of intrigue and mystery. It just was way too literal. It was way too long. I'm shocked at myself that I even finished the whole book, and and I just would not recommend reading it. Save yourself the time. Don't believe the hype. The next book to make it to my least favorite books of the year list is probably my most disappointing read of the year. And I know it's a little bit controversial because a lot of people love this book and they die by this book. For me, unfortunately, I did not enjoy it. It was a whole mess. And that book is Verity by Colleen Hoover. I do not understand what this book was. I still to this day have no idea what I read between those pages because it was a complete dumpster fire headed straight for a landfill and there wasn't even time to stop for snacks. That's how confused I was. I did not understand it. I reread so many chapters so many times. I get the ending. I get what she was trying to do and I know she really wanted to do something very far-fetched and super out there, really work on that shock factor value and just take it left. But for me, it went so far left, I think it fell off a cliff because it just did not make sense. And I'm not going to tell you about the plot because I think if you're going to give it a try, just go into it blind, just see what you get out of it. And if you're like me, you're going to come out of it blind because I had no clue what she was trying to do with this. It was not believable. To me, thrillers need to be a little bit believable that something might like this might happen in real life or to someone you know. That's what gives it that chill factor and that little bit of goosebump on your skin kind of factor. But this was so far-fetched and so ridiculous I just could not get into it so I didn't love it but again like I said maybe it's worth a read I'm more of the you know I need Colleen to break my heart instead of scare the living daylights out of me and maybe that's just what I'll stick to so give it a go if you want but for me it was not a go the next book to make it to my least favorite books of the year list is To Sir Philip with Love by Julia Quinn. This is a Bridgerton novel. It's the fifth novel in the series. And I personally was really surprised by the way that this book went because the other four books, I did read those. I found them so delightful and so charming, just like the show, which is also very delightful. I was really thrown off base with this book because in the show and in the books previous to this, Eloise is presented as a really strong character, really strong female with a lot of opinions. And that's saying a lot about the times that they were in. Women did not have really big roles in their households and in society. And for Eloise to be really opinionated and to have a really strong personality in that time was so nice to see. And the books and the show had been building up to Eloise having this really powerful love story. And then you get to this book and you're like, what happened, Eloise? It's like she fell, bumped her head, got amnesia, and then woke up and let this man tell her exactly what to do and what to feel and what emotions to have. It was completely unlike like the Eloise that had been presented from the four books before, so I was completely surprised. This book has some bizarre commentary on marriage and compatibility and childbearing and child rearing and just the role of women. I know it's a different time, but like I said, Eloise was presented as a woman who wasn't typical of the time and she was supposed to be the one that was supposed to shake things up. It's almost like Julia Quinn kind of ran out of ideas because there's so many dang Bridgerton kids that came before Eloise. So it's like, did you just run out of love stories to give to these characters because this one was not great and I didn't love it for Eloise. I wish she'd gotten a different ending. I wish she'd gotten a different man who challenged her and who thought differently and who thought a little bit more forward thinking like she did. So it was really disappointing. The worst part of it is I don't even know if I want to read the rest of the Bridgerton kids stories because this one threw me off so much but hopefully in the future, I mean they say time heals all wounds, maybe I'll be able to put this to bed and move on to the other kids but for now I'm taking a break from the Bridgerton world because this was so upsetting. And the last book to make it to my least favorite books of the year list is The Summer I Turn Pretty by Jenny Han. Now this book is a YA book, so I understand I might not be the intended target audience because 
you know, I'm a grown person with mortgages and 401ks and diapers and all the things. And so I understand and appreciate that maybe this is meant for a really young audience, but I do enjoy YA content, like some of the books I mentioned earlier in this video. So I don't think the issue is about the intended reading age. I think that this book was just so super diluted and very surface level. It was talking about some deep topics, but it wasn't presented in a very deep way. The show, on the other hand, I found so compelling. I love the characters. I love the plot line. I thought it had a lot more substance, whereas this was just a very diluted version of it. I don't think I'll be reading the next two books in the series, but I will be watching the show because, like I said, the show has a lot more depth to it. In the show, you know, you really like who Belly is as a character. The moms are really great characters. The brothers are presented in a really interesting way. Team Conrad forever, if you know, you know. Um, but yeah, the, this book just did not do it for me. Like I said, very diluted version of what's presented in the show. I wouldn't recommend. There you have it. Those are my top 10 favorite books of the year, as well as some of my least favorite books of the year. It was such a great reading year. I'm looking forward to reading so many great books in 2023 and making more videos about my experiences reading those books. Thank you for watching this one and I'll see you next time.